What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, March 22nd, 2024. If you're new to the channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a threat to you. That's right, we don't just talk COVID. We talk about the other viruses as well. I often get comments where people say, Oh, why don't you talk about something else? Why don't you talk about flu? We do. We do quite often. And we're going to be doing a lot of that this weekend because we got video today, this one here, tomorrow, and again on Sunday. That's right. I got stuff planned for the entire weekend here on the channel. So if you like this content, give it a thumbs up. The more likes we get, the more comments we get, the more YouTube shares our videos. Let's try for 100 likes and 30 comments in today's update. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay informed. You really need to stay on top of with what's going on out there. Well, that's what I do. And of course, share these videos with anyone you know. All right, today we're going to do a couple news stories. Then we're going to look at some daily data that we usually look at. Air quality, some EMS data, data from the CDC. That's right, there is some new data just in from the CDC. Then we'll look at a couple states, and then tomorrow we're going to take a look at a bunch more states, and we're going to look at some other news stories tomorrow as well. Didn't want to keep this video too long today. It'll probably run about 15 minutes. All right, starting off, have you been following the news? We didn't talk about it much on here because we didn't know very much, but have you been following the news about what's going on with Kate Middleton? Well, guess what? We finally found out just what this mysterious illness is, what everything was all about. Turns out, Kate Middleton announces that she has cancer. That's right. After several weeks of not knowing what was going on with her, her announcement is that she has been diagnosed with cancer. So I send my well wishes to her. Hopefully she has a full and speedy recovery from that. All right. ABC News put out a story. We're just going to read a headline here. Four years later, experts are just beginning to scratch the surface of understanding long COVID. Hmm. That's odd. They say the words, just beginning? Well, wait a second. We're loosening isolation. Isolation is now 24 hours for acute COVID. You know, when you test positive, everything's open. Everything's moved on. I thought we knew everything. Everyone's acting like COVID's over. They told you to do the great unmasking. But here we are. We're just beginning to understand what long COVID can do. And for those who do not know, I love to remind you of what this is. It's any condition or any new issue you might have post-COVID case. That's right. If you've had a COVID case and you're having post-issues, that's a form of long COVID. If you're as much as having a cough, that just will not go away. Maybe it's hurting your chest or whatever. That's a form of long COVID. And now they say we're just beginning to understand it. But hey, you do you. Let COVID rip because, hey, we, we don't really understand it. We're just starting to understand it. Totally ridiculous. All right. Finally, we move on to this story. I don't usually share uh, stories about vaccine risk or whatnot because that causes a lot of controversy, but I figured this one, you know what? Let's share it. For all my lovely friends that like to leave comments and say, clot shot, oh, it's the vaccine, it's this, it's that. Well, here you go. Study finds the bivalent COVID vaccine not, keyword, not tied to stroke risk. So no, there isn't any. Keep on leaving your comments. I mean, I love to leave them. I love to read them. Love to block some of them. But eh, go right ahead. Carry on. It's not causing any stroke risk. Taking a look at the latest air quality values across the United States, you're going to see quite a mixed picture here. And then let it load. You can see here from Texas on northward to the east. Yeah, look at that. Really bad. There's a big air uh, storm system that's going to be coming to the east. It's going to cause flooding rainfall up and down the coast. I know. We haven't done our other channel in a long time. I've just been so busy lately. Maybe one day we'll get back to that. West Coast, 
mixed bag. While there is a lot of green, there is some yellows and oranges mixed in as well. But again, the big picture is here. Anywhere east of the Mississippi, really from Oklahoma, the Great Plains, anywhere on east, you can see here it's just bad air quality. I suspect when we do the update tomorrow, we're going to see bad air quality along the I-95 corridor. Where it's going to be pouring rain and in some cases flash flooding. I know, not a nice weekend for the east. At least in the West Coast, it's a little bit better for air quality. All right, taking a look at Philadelphia EMS calls yesterday. Yet again, lower. This is this is fantastic. These past few weeks have been some of the lowest levels of the entire pandemic in my city. Fingers crossed that it stays. 693 EMS incidents yesterday. That's fantastic. Let's do a live look at what's going in on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And we do see some concerning calls. Cardiac arrest in Abington. Ooh, that's not too far away from here. Uh, I'm seeing back injury, head injury, respiratory emergency, another respiratory emergency, another cardiac emergency, fall victim, unconscious subject. Yeah, some uh, bad calls at this time. Taking a look at Chester County, just five calls right now. Sick person, overdose, falls, hemorrhaging, and an injured person at all right, let's take a look at this week's Walgreens numbers. The national positivity is 15.4%. The prior week was 17%. That's a difference of down 1.6%. Total test, which it may say that's lower. It's actually up because there's more reported data. Maybe they had some data last week that they just weren't reporting. Honestly, I don't know. 9,357 versus 10,988 tests. Again, this is for COVID. You see some places that are in red. Some of those places have significant decreases in testing. Some of the places in the green, all testing, whether it went up or not, hey, things are getting better. All right, Biobot, I have to show you this. Honestly, I sometimes question why I still show Biobot, but I do. I think some of their data is just off anymore. And there's, I'm not the only one that feels that way. There's several people that are starting to feel this way. All right, taking a look at Biobot. You can see the most of the country is dropping at this time. The northeast, the south, the west is dropping. But then you have this random, oh, what's going on here in the Great Lakes Midwest region? You can see here, the Midwest, yeah, there was a little bit of a rise. Actually, it was a pretty steep one uh, week rise. Don't know what that's about. I think it's going to drop again next week, but I don't know. We'll have to keep watching it. And I promised I would show you that uh, chart of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Here it is right here. Yeah, look down below. You can see the dotted line. That would be the national average. And there's Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Zoom, straight upward. Again, don't know what's going on there. Don't even know if that's real. Because when we look at the more populated, I'll show it to you again, Philadelphia County. EMS calls, I, I show them every day, EMS calls are down. So if Bucks County was rising that fast for COVID, I think Philadelphia would be rising at least somewhat as well. And we're not really seeing much. I went to the city's wastewater dashboard site, Philadelphia, not seeing much of a rise. I would show you Bucks County, but when we go to Bucks County's page, I don't have it up on the screen. It takes you to a page that no longer works and it says, click on, the Pennsylvania State page, which Pennsylvania stopped collecting data, so can't really do much of that as they don't really care about the collection of data anymore. All right, let's take a look, a brief look at some of the wastewater data this week, and we can see here that uh, around the country, national level continues to drop for the CDC, 80 to 100 percent COVID detected, which is in red. Take a look at that; it's actually dropped again. This is really good. 22 sites now at that, 60 to 79 percent are at. 158 sites and even this light blue color right here which is 40 to 59 percent detected even that is down 18 percent that's some really good news and there's 366 sites at that level then the medium shade of blue is at 20 to 39 percent with 463 sites that's flat this week and a dark shade of blue zero to 19 percent which is really low levels that's now at uh 200 sites and that is up by 23 percent all right, moving on here, not going to really take a look at uh, too many wastewater scan sites. I think we'll just do two today because we're really going to hit this heavy on Sunday. We'll probably show one or two sites tomorrow as well. Sunday will be the classic wastewater day. Taking a look here at Stanford, Connecticut. Look at this. Medium for COVID. 
if you want to believe that, that, that might even be closer to low, but not really rising at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A, slight rise once again. And Influenza B, again, also a slight rise. Does look like maybe it's leveling off now. HMPV is dropping somewhat. Norovirus is having a slight rise at this time. No issues with MPOX. And coming down here to Hepatitis A, there are a few detections of that. Now, continuing out further to the west, let's go out to, I don't know, how about we come out here to Colorado Springs and we see what's going on there. And taking a look at this in Colorado Springs, medium to low for COVID at this time, not really rising. If anything, it's dropping a little more. Same with RSV. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B is really dropping at this point. That's good to see. And norovirus. Wow. Rapid drop now with norovirus, mpox, no detections, and hepatitis A is fine at this time. Wastewater around the country? Look at this. We're seeing less and less darker shades, more and more lighter shades. That means it's going down into the moderate to low to even minimal categories in much of the United States. Taking a look at hospital capacity, it has dropped a little bit. 76.1% of all beds are being used in the United States. 1.5% of them are for COVID. 0.9% is for influenza. See, we do talk about flu ICU situation. That is currently at 71.1% of all beds being used, 1.5% for COVID, 1% for influenza. We'll take a look at some more states individually over the weekend. All right, taking a look at COVID deaths, change from prior week, it's zero. And look at this. It hasn't dropped much, but in some places, it continues to drop. So that is good news. Taking a look at hospitalizations. Very good news. Hospital admissions, 10,719 in the past week. That is down by 20.9%. Folks, we are dropping right now. We're coming into what will probably be the lowest time of the year for COVID. Maybe over the next month, maybe into the following month. Still don't know if we're going to see a post-spring break Easter, St. Patrick's Day rise. We'll just have to continue to watch what happens, but right now, Things are really dropping. These are some of the lowest levels we will see all year. This is really uh, fantastic stuff to see. Taking a look at epidemic status. It has grown ever so slightly. It's likely growing in uh, Kansas. But everywhere else is either stable, likely declining, or declining at this time. And when we come up to COVID, we can see COVID's not growing or likely growing anywhere. It's either stable, likely declining, or declining. Like I said, some of the lowest transmission of the year. And if we don't see a wave from Easter, if we don't see a wave from Spring Breakers, if we don't see a wave from St. Patrick's Day, levels will drop even further. Unless a new variant comes along, which when that does happen, then we will see a wave. The point I'm driving at here is if you wanted to do some masked meetup, masking meetups with friends or doctor's appointment, whatever, we're starting to come into the time. You probably got about another week. Then I would pause. I would pause for a few weeks post-Easter and wait and see what happens. If there's no surge and things drop even further, you can have meetups with these COVID-safe friends. You can, you know, go to doctor's appointments. Of course, you got to take all the precautions when you do so. But, you know, we're coming into safe period here. And in this safe period, um, this is the time that you want to do stuff that you've put off for a really long time. Now, I'm not saying, ooh, it's safe now. I can go out to a restaurant. No, 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 no. Don't do any indoor dining or anything like that. That's far too risky. But you get where I'm coming from here. We're coming into a safer period. Take it while it lasts because, as you know, last year, as soon as 4th of July came, ugh, we had a summer wave and that lasted for the rest of the year. Hopefully... We can at least stay low till the summertime. We'll see. All right, continuing on here. Taking a look at the latest variants. This did not update this week. It'll update again next week. JN.1 is at 86.5%. JN1.13 is at 9.5%. JN1.18 is at 1.8%. Moving on now to influenza. See, this is not COVID. This is influenza now. And it's dropping across the country, with exceptions to Nebraska. You're just being stubbornly high, or actually, no, very high. And Washington, D.C., you're still very high as well. Some places are still high. Iowa, Ohio, Michigan, North Dakota, New Mexico. With the case of being Ohio, it's going to take you several more weeks to get you down. And Nebraska and D.C., I don't know how long it's going to take for you to go down because you're just not really dropping that much. Although, if we go through the loop here, D.C. did drop a shade. 
this uh, in the past couple weeks. But you can see here, throughout the whole entire influenza season, it really peaked uh, about the end of uh, December. You can see here, then after that, it started dropping. And in some places, had a second peaking in beginning of February to the middle of February in Ohio. Just had a really bad month, February. And now, much of the country continues to drop at this time. New Jersey. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what the numbers are today in Jersey. Let me refresh this. And hopefully we had more hospitals reporting. We did. 69 out of 70 with only 309 hospitalizations. Wow. This is becoming uh, some of the lowest levels in a very long time in New Jersey. Almost some of the lowest levels of the pandemic. Although last year they got down even lower than this. And heck, they're not going to stop yet unless there is a wave from spring break. On the ventilator, 25 in the ICU at this time, 45 again, 69 out of 70 hospitals reported, 55 discharges at this time. All right, New York State, a little bit of a mixed picture here. Not a terrible concern, just something to keep an eye on. 730 positive cases, that's not bad. But when we come to the hospitalizations statewide, you notice here, they were dropping. Then it slowed a little bit last week, and now it's kind of stalled. It's not really dropping anymore. It's kind of just bounce, starting that bounce off the bottom business this week. Hopefully, next week, we can see him resume dropping again. If they stop at this level, that's not good. But there's also another piece to the puzzle. So let's just read the numbers first. 691 hospitalized, 87 people in the ICU. Notice that ICU number being 87. They started the week at 69, then it went to 78, then 74, now it's up to 87. So there is a rise in the number of people in the ICU intensive care unit, so that's not good to see. And a part of this issue is because of New York City and Long Island, which are both experiencing a stalled out pattern at this time. They're not really dropping anymore. Here's Long Island. You can see here, Long Island, not dropping anymore. Let's take a look at New York City. I think New York City actually, yeah, their ICUs are actually going up ever so slightly. And you can see here, again, hospitalizations, they have stalled, they've slowed down. Now, I've looked at parts of the other parts of the state, and this pattern's not really happening there. It's still dropping there. It's New York City and Long Island that is stalled out right now. So we'll have to see. Don't really know what the cause is of that. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. We'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow. We will look at all the weekly states that we did not get to. There will probably be quite a few of them. We'll do that. I'm sure we'll have some more news. And then Sunday will be Wastewater Day. So, yes, we are doing videos through the weekend. If you like this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. And, of course, share this with anyone you know. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. And if you don't catch my videos over the weekend, well, have a fantastic weekend. See you all again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.